Yo, what's going on, guys? It's Houston Sports Talk back in another video today. And today, the Detroit Pistons have signed Malik Beasley to a one year, $6 million deal. And I don't know how people are going to react to this, but the Detroit Pistons are making solid moves this offseason. And I think they're really going to be a solid team in the Eastern Conference next year. I mean, look, I'm not, I'm not going to say Detroit's going to make it to the playoffs or the Pistons are going to be a top team in the Eastern Conference. But outside of, look, maybe some of the top eight teams that we're looking in the Eastern Conference, you look at Boston, Philadelphia, uh, just to name a couple teams in mind, uh, I mean, outside of Boston, Philadelphia, New York, Miami, Milwaukee, Indiana, Orlando, and Cleveland, who are probably the eight best teams in the Eastern Conference, I don't see anybody who who like is a guaranteed team to be in the top ten. I think those eight teams right there that I just mentioned are the teams that will – I don't see a way they're not in the top eight or the top ten in the Eastern Conference standings next year. But then everybody else in the Eastern Conference, I think it's an open, it's an open ball game. There are a lot of other teams who, uh, who, who the, you know, the Pistons were not as good as last year. Who I think will be worse. I think Chicago's going to be worse than they were last year. I think Brooklyn's going to be a lot worse than they were last year. I think you can say the same thing for the Atlanta Hawks. I think those three teams right there specifically are going to be a lot worse than they were this year. And I think Detroit has a chance with some of the moves they've made this offseason to be better than those. Look, I don't really like the Ron Holland draft pick. He could be a solid player off the bench for Detroit. But I like the other moves they're making. I like the Tobias Harris addition. I like the Tim Hardaway Jr. trade. And this other move I, that we're going to be talking about right now is another move I really like, and that's bringing in Malik Beasley. Malik Beasley had a great season with Milwaukee. 79 games, 77 starts, 29 minutes per game, 44% from the floor, 41.3% from three on seven attempts per game. He has shot nearly 39% from three in his in his career, 11.3 points per game with four rebounds per game and one and a half assists per game. He's not a great defensive player, but he's going to bring in good three-point shooting and good scoring. So that that is an addition I love. And not only did they bring in a great three-point shooter with Malik Beasley, they brought in a great three-point shooter with Tim Hardaway Jr. and a good scorer in Tim Hardaway Jr. They added in a good scorer in Tobias Harris, who is a great rebounder and a decent facilitator as well. People want to hate on Tobias Harris, but... He wasn't doing too bad being a third star next to or third, you know, the third best player next to, you know, Tyrese Maxey and Joel Embiid to average 17 points per game uh, with, I believe, seven rebounds per game next to those two guys is not bad at all. So in input what he did for Philadelphia onto the Detroit Pistons team next to Cade, I think. You know, I think Tobias Harris is going to put up some great numbers. If you look at this team right now, uh, a healthy Pistons team, if they don't get rid of anybody, they don't add anybody in, you have Cade Cunningham, most likely what I think the starting lineup would be. You have Cade Cunningham at point guard. You have Malik Beasley at shooting guard. Tobias Harris at, or sorry, uh, Asar Thompson at, at small forward. Tobias Harris at power forward. And Jalen Duran at center. Then off the bench, you have actually a really solid bench. Jaden Ivey. Tim Hardaway Jr., Ron Holland, Isaiah Stewart. You also have another really nice young player, Marcus Sasser, off the bench. So I know a lot of people don't like the might not like the idea of Isaiah Stewart and Jay and Ivy coming off the bench. I just don't really see Malik Beasley and Tobias Harris, the two guys they pay you know some money to bring in, uh, coming off the bench. Mainly, one of the reasons why I don't see Malik Beasley coming off the bench is because they're going to really use the shooting in their starting lineup with Beasley, but also the fact that. I don't really think Malik Beasley and Tim Hardaway Jr. would work nicely off the bench together. So I think one has to start and one probably comes off the bench. And I think if that's going to be if it's, if it's going to be that way, most likely Beasley is going to be in the starting lineup. And with uh, with, with with Tobias Harris, I think he's going to probably most likely start over Isaiah Stewart. As good as this, even though you know Isaiah Stewart had a good season, um, they they just paid Tobias Harris twenty six million dollars a year. But I love the Malik Beasley signing. I think if you look at this Pistons team, if healthy, if Cade's healthy, if, look, if Cade had, if Cade is healthy and he takes a, a jump, uh, I'm not, I'm not, I'm just talking about a big jump here. Like if he can take a huge fourth year jump and and you know really turn into potentially a superstar with the money he's just been given, that is the type of superstar money. If he can turn into a superstar and you have the team around him, Beasley, Tobias Harris. Uh, you also need the other young guys to, you know, develop more. Jalen Duran, uh, Asar Thompson would be in that starting lineup. You need Jay and Ivy and, uh, 
you know, Marcus Sasser and some of the other young players in this team to continue to grow. Isaiah Stewart. So uh, as you see, you know, often young players get better every year. I think that's going to happen with Cade. I think that's most likely going to happen with Asar Thompson. I think that'll probably happen with Jalen Duran as well. I think a lot of their players are their young players are going to improve. And with younger guys improving and them adding in veterans like Beasley, Tobias Harris, Tim Hardaway Jr., getting a really good coach like J.B. Bickerstaff, I, I really think um, that this team, I'm not going to say they can be a play-in team. I, I think they could be a play-in team because if you look at some of the teams that were in the play-in last year, like Atlanta and Chicago, and the team that was outside looking in in Brooklyn at the 11th seed are all dumping off players, trading players away, kind of doing fire a fire sale, basically. Um, and it looks like all three of these teams are not serious about winning next season. So, look, Detroit could jump those three teams in the standings, in my opinion. But at the same time, uh, I think Detroit, they might not take a leap into the play-in or the playoffs, but I think they can take a like a, a huge leap to the point where it is, you know, where they are, um, like, Oh, we just went to like the 15th, 14th seed all the way to the 12th or 11th seed. Uh, look at the Houston Rockets last season who were the 15th seed, uh, were the worst team in the NBA, 20, 20 wins, then, or sorry, 22 wins. Then the next season, they add in a very good head coach in Ime Adoka. They add in veterans, just like this Detroit team has done. They've added in a veteran head coach in J.B. Bickerstaff, and they've added in veterans like Tobias Harris, Tim Hardaway Jr., and... Um, Malik Beasley, just like the Houston Rockets did last year, and sure they didn't make the jump to uh, you know a big enough jump to the play-in or the playoffs, but they made a 19-win improvement and looked like a completely different team. That's the kind of thing I could see happening for the Detroit Pistons. I could see them going to the 12th or the 11th seed in the Eastern Conference, which I know that's not the play-in, that's not the playoffs. But that's a whole lot better than what we've seen before. Uh, but I think they're making the right moves. I love the Malik Beasley signing. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. And peace out.